Welcome to Show Studio. My name is Natalie Kahn, and um, we are here today with my wonderful panel to talk about Craig Green and his show in Paris for Spring Summer 2023. Just to quickly introduce myself, I uh, am the course leader for BA Culture Criticism and Curation at Central St. Martins, and uh, yeah, I've been just I'm super excited to be back uh, to chair a panel. But uh, before we start discussing the show, I want to let my wonderful panelists um, to introduce themselves. Josh, do you want to go first? Hi, I'm Joshua Crabtree. I'm a menswear designer and an alumnus of the MA Fashion Menswear course at Central St. Martins. I'm Martha Franceschini. I'm a design historian and researcher at the V&A here in London. Hi, I'm Piero Kiev. I'm an experienced designer. Um, I live here in London. I'm, I used to be an architect and I'm, I'm a fashion collectionist. I guess I Hi, I'm Cecilia. I'm a Associate Lecturer at the MA Applied Imagination at Central St. Martin, and I'm a freelance writer. Thank you. We have an amazing panel today. And I don't know about you, but I think this is like a dream dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> so just to say a little bit of, of you know, a little introduction um, about our designer today. So Greg Green, this is his second show in Paris. So he showed a year ago. Uh, for the first time in France, and it was a big deal at the time, because Greg Green is a British designer. He graduated at Central St. Martins. He was part of Fashion East. He rose through sort of the, the, sort of the British, uh, the London scene. And I think for a designer to move to Paris for one season, so he did it season before last, then in January this year, he came back to London and uh, showed um, in a warehouse space in the Docklands. So I think that was also really an interesting move. But now he's back in Paris. Uh, he showed yesterday, the show was yesterday. And um, I'm interested in that sort of shift of what that means um, for a designer to leave London. Remember, Craig Green is an independent label um, in a sea of luxury fashion brands to move to Paris. Is that a brave thing? Is it, is it the natural progression? How do you guys feel about it? And Josh, I'm coming to you first. I feel like it's a, it's a natural progression in terms of like being a young like London-based designer. Um, to begin like your career here, there's like a great community and a sense of like support um, systems around. But in terms of like expanding to more of a, a global audience and sort of getting your name out there a bit more, I feel like it's, um, it's sort of like a natural progression for, in my opinion. Great. Yeah, I think that since he graduated from St. Martin's, um, it was, he was the big deal in the new wave of menswear here. Yeah. He revived the scene. Um, and this is something that uh, still now critics remember. So it's quite interesting to see that he decided to move to Paris for, for this show specifically and to show at the Musée de Londres, which is a an anthropological museum that had kind of many lives in, the, in its history. And now it's a museum laboratory. So yes. it was kind of interesting to see that he decided to go there. Um, and I don't think that the city is that important as much as the choice of location, to show in a museum, to show in a place that's evolving and changing definitions of men and trying to kind of collect specimen of men uh, and defining them through objects. I mean, for me, it was, uh, it was a great move. Fantastic, really, really interesting. And the setting, and that is, I think, also important if we consider the fashion show as a whole, but that the show sort of, yeah, is informed by the space and then the place informs the collection. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pietro, what, what yeah, do you I, think about the movie? I think it's a natural progression. Yeah. It's a natural thing. Not a move that you do. You have more exposure, particularly for that cutting edge kind of fashion. Like, you know, London is, is an amazing fashion week, but it's not the same vis visibility you get in Paris. Yeah. And I agree that the choice of the, the place was essential as well. Because I think now loads of designers are doing more site-specific shows. Yeah. Like I'm thinking of the Gucci show in like that scenario in Castel del Monte, like which was absolutely unexpected and so secret. No one knew it. So it's the place that makes a show. It's, you're finding a place and you do the show in the right place, I think. so. Cecilia, your research is about narratives, yeah. um, and you're interested in conversations and how narratives are created. Do you agree, is place, is it really about place, or is it about the city? I think, um, talking from a narrative perspective, it's very much interesting to see 
the fact that he chose the museum of men and his relationship with masculinity, but also how much he made the location his own. There is a theme of uh, protection throughout his collection. You can see elements being still in their packaging. Uh, the ties were still in, in dust bags. And so it really felt like there was a protective film of plastic even around the location. And so themes of protection resonating between the collection and the space itself. And also the fact that this is a museum, museum that is focusing on um, an um, uh, like anthropological mm. point of view. So I think it's very fitting in his own identity and his complex and very mindful and um, representation of masculinity. So I think it was a strong choice in terms of uh, his identity, uh, in, in his creative identity, and it was very interesting to see how much he was able to make the space his own. Fantastic, thank you. No, that's a beautiful response. Um, when I prepared for this panel, um, I came across one sentence more than once, yeah? And then you think, mm, why is that? Why does that keep coming back? Either people copy each other and they say what others have said, and I'm doing the same now, but um, I wanted you to think about that sentence in a way. So it says, Craig Green gives the customer something they didn't know they wanted. And, you know, it's sort of a cliche to say that in a way, you know, it's part of fashion discourse, people sort of say that, it's marketing slang. But I, I was thinking about that sentence for a while and I let that sit and I thought, mm, what is it then that we didn't know we wanted? And you know, Pedro, I'm coming to you first. As such, you know, you are, you are a fan, you are a collector, you wear the clothes. So what does he, what does he give you that you didn't know you wanted? Uh, well, as I said, like for me, the, the difference, what makes a brand stand out is that it has got a very strong identity, mm -hmm. but it's not branded. That's something that for me is really important, to have identity without having a brand. Just, and I, I was telling before that I had my weirdest experience. I, I decided to wear a whole Craig Green outfit to go to Bergheim in Berlin. And a guy came to me and said, oh, are you wearing Craig Green? <laughs> and I love that. That's what, I, like, that's what it gives me that no other brands do. You know, like, your people that know the brand recognize it, and that's what I, I like, and is in, yeah. That's so it, it's such a strong signature, and it's it a strong speaks signature. to you, and it yeah. gives you that, yeah, yeah. That, that sense that yeah. it connects. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm. What, do, what do others, others think? What, what don't we know that we want? I feel like what Craig does like really, really effectively, he takes like really classic archetypal menswear garments and silhouettes um, and sort of through the, the attention to detail, all of these sort of more theatrical elements you see in the runway shows, he diffuses really well into like a commercial product. So it's like, it's not something that's like really um, out there or sort of like, different for sort of like the broader fashion audience, but like the sort of the ticket pocket with the hole cut out of and these kind of like circular embroideries that you see like across all of his commercial pieces. It's something that is like very accessible to a, to a wide kind of audience of, of menswear customers. I think it's also related to, um, you don't really, the tension that you can find in his design. So he's, like moving uh, constantly and being on the edge, on the verge of art, artistic practices such as sculpture and fashion, more commercial fashion. Mm -hmm. And the same tension is in the clothes. So um, you don't know you need an armor to go into your kind of daily activities. That's true. But yeah. you have it on yourself, on your suit. Yeah. And I think that in this collection, what was particularly interesting uh, was this reference to uh, very classic tailoring. Mm but then kind of armored up in a way with his signature padding, which is again an armor, but also a cocoon. It's just like, it's always, there's always this tension between protection and um, kind of going, going out in the world, but then caring about feelings and what you have inside. It's kind of, it's inhabiting clothes. It feels, it feels like he wants people to inhabit that, his clothes instead of just wearing them. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I love all the terms that you're using. They're all sort of loaded with emotion and feeling. And one thing that I 
teach fashion history and theory sometimes, and the one thing I always say to my students when we first start off, I say, fashion is about desire. Bang, that's it. That's it. If you want to know what fashion is, it's very difficult to define as a term, but it always comes down to desire. And that's also why I found that sentence so interesting, you know, mm -hmm. this idea of, ah, it's what we didn't know we want. So that is what we didn't know we would desire. And I love, I love Mata, how you're saying, you know, how you're saying about protection, about mm. armor, about that sort of sense of belonging, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you also agree with that? I yeah. think I partly agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that sentence really reminds me of how much we tend to celebrate disruption mm -hmm. and brands being able to dictate our desires. But I think when it comes to Craig Green, it also comes to the ability of creating relatable narratives. So I think the audience is able to find uh, garments in front of them that feel relatable. So yeah, there is the element of uh, extreme creativity, but it's very much balanced. And I think one of uh, the ability of Craig Green is to create a representation of masculinity that is so mindful of its complexity mm that then he is able to create like a, a more universal narrative. Yeah. Uh, also for, let's say, an audience that doesn't necessarily present us or identify as, as male. Like, I don't want to appropriate a narrative I'm, I don't, I'm not part of because uh, I was assigned female at birth and I present as female. But there are elements in his work that I find relatable, elements of protection, vulnerability, overprotection, or like mm -hmm. coming of age. So it's true that he's making products that are very much sellable, but I feel like the way that he's creating desires in us is not around dictating them. It's very subtle and it feels quite authentic. Wonderful, I think that makes perfect sense to me. That was a really lovely response, thank you. Amazing. Um, I have not witnessed a Craig Green show in person. I haven't been there, but I have heard from people who have been there that two things happen when you are in that space. Has any of you been to a Craig no. Green show in person? Once. Once. Well, lucky. <laughs> it was actually the, 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 the one before this one, so oh, the one right. in East right, London. London. Yes, and it was yes. quite, I think that even Craig said that it was quite different from what he did before okay. in terms of, it was very airy, it, you didn't feel like you were suffocated, uh -huh. plenty of space to see, no kind almost no front row, so it was very democratic also as a show. And, and I was very much looking forward to it because everyone says that it's a very emotional, kind of cathartic exactly, moment. Exactly, yes. And I have to say, it is. That's what I wanted to ask it's, you guys about. So think, how does that, so I've heard of people crying and then feeling a little bit embarrassed that they're crying and then noticing everyone else is crying. I mean, that's fantastic, right? Yeah, and, and I think it's related to the materiality of clothes, mm. which is something that you miss. And the haptic material and even seeing the models just walking in a very kind of weird way that's dictated from the clothes. But, but really looking up, up close at um, the knitwear and the volumes and how the volumes relate with the, the movement. I think that that, is also linked to kind of a definition of masculinity that's intention. Yeah, I like what you're saying about clothes dictating how we move. I think that that also creates an emotional response in some way. How do you, how do others feel about um, sort of, we could also maybe think of other designers that are probably create an emotional response or other shows, other, how, what makes a show make us feel something? I think like it's a combination of the, the, the selection of the venue, the music, the casting, the way the models are walking, like yeah. combined, it all sort of contributes to this larger sort of feeling um, of like the mood and the, the inspirations like of the collection. And I feel like what, what Craig does really well, he sort of like addresses this sort of like true sort of like fragile aspect and like the vulnerability of like masculinity, which I feel like is challenging sort of um, like the, the attitudes of sort of like the wider world in terms of like how a, a man is expected to behave and to, to be. And you have all of these protective, as we mentioned before, um, details, but it's like presented in like a very sort of like sensitive and like kind of like pure way. It's not like sort of like 
really sort of aggressive in its presentation. It's actually quite sort of like beautiful and like very considered and delicate. Wonderful, yeah. I think as fashion is one of the best forms of art. Art gives that. Art gives you feelings and emotions. So when you see something on on a, on a catwalk that is like, gives you an emotion. Like you see something, particularly Craig's collection, because it's like really contaminated with loads of art in it. There's it's a, in between art and fashion. It's like, and it's wearable, but it's art at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that, that it's, you know, some, some of the pieces are really just get moved by them. Yeah, you know, so sculpture. In yeah, it's sense. like when you go to an art show and mm -hmm. uh, you see a painting and you just go, oh, wow, this is amazing, or a sculpture. It's the same thing for fashion. So for me, like fashion is the form of art that I collect because I think it's amazing because you can wear it. You can put it on your body and feel it. Great. Thank you, Bridget. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree that the, the connection with culture, uh, sculpture is certainly um, so very relevant. And I want to have a look a bit closer at some of the individual looks in a minute. Um, again, I want to come back to this um, something that you guys talked about a little bit already, and I just wanted to just go a little bit deeper here. Um, Craig Green takes references outside of fashion, uh, which I think is, is really interesting. And uh, you, you've touched on that already. So we, we have some themes that are emerging about protection, about the tribal, about... Um, and he also speaks himself about not looking at other fashion designers for inspiration, and that is never something that drove him or that drove sort of his sort of you know his journey into innovation and sort of breaking ideas of what fashion can be, sort of on the runway but also on the shop floor. And I um, I wanted to talk about sort of the importance. And I work in education, and and I know Josh that you know you've you've been on that journey. You've studied menswear at CSM as well. Is that something that is relevant? Do we, so should we reject looking at fashion? Is that, or at fashion history? Was, um, that, was that part of your experience as well of studying menswear? I mean, we were, we were sort of encouraged to sort of have a, an understanding and an awareness of what came before. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, I, I personally, when I design, I don't always like to look at sort of direct fashion references and to take from other areas. So like in my own personal work, sort of music, fine art, film, so many different areas that can influence the creative process because they're all sort of like intertwined in this like connected um, way. And I think that like, especially in, in today's like world with like social media and like the, the circulation of like the same imagery to sort of like take yourself away from that and not kind of get caught up in what's going on around you and focus more about like your own sort of vision. I think that it can be sometimes a little bit distracting to focus too much on what's going on around you rather than just kind of removing yourself and having this sort of insular way of, of working. Interesting. Yeah, no, no, that's interesting. Do you have thoughts on this as well? On yeah, I think um, it's interesting to frame this attitude that he has uh, in his own process of becoming a fashion designer. So he originally started attending the foundation course at CSM in order to study fine arts. And I remember I read an interview uh, with a passage that was very, to me, it was... Um, very surprising, and he said that he started to gain an interest in the fashion courses once he realized that the students that were attending fashion courses, they were the first to arrive at university and the last ones to leave, which is going a bit against the stereotyped idea that we have of students like Sancho Saint Martin, that they might gain your attention because of, let's say, a flamboyant self-expression. So it's as if he was able to identify the dignity of, of labor mm -hmm. and craftsmanship in being able to study fashion design. And also in his own family, his father is a carpenter and his mother is a nurse. So I can see that then uh, he also said it was very liberating for him to understand that fashion can be about anything, but he starts from his own identity, which wasn't necessarily related uh, to fashion. So I think it's uh, making sense for him to just, just stay true to his identity. I believe if, if someone has a very authentic connection to fashion, then I do see that there can be 
um, a level of depth in fashion references as well. But I think in this case, it's very telling of his attitude of talking about anything that he feels relevant to his own identity. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Really insightful. And yeah, no, that's a great response. Uh, Marta, you are a, a fashion historian, and uh, I've had a, I had a quick look, and uh, you also worked on the Masculinities Exhibition yeah. at the v And um, there is an image, and I, maybe we could have a quick look yeah. at that. It's, it's actually, that is from the exhibition, isn't it? It's and the it, opening object of the exhibition. the opening object, I know. And it's on the poster, right? Is that the... It's one of the posters. One we of have them. an array yeah. of posters, but yeah. Um, it, it's a very representative object and um, we had conversations with Craig Green because we wanted to, um, to open with an object that had relations to London and to the London menswear scene and how um, and what's the role of the scene in the global context of menswear and um, actually this wasn't the, the first object that we thought about but then, you know, the perilous um, route of the exhibition with the pandemic in the middle, we had more kind of thinking time and thinking space. And we were actually very lucky to, to be able to, to see this before it was shown. This belongs to the spring summer 2021. Mm. And Craig said that it was made in lockdown, designed and made in lockdown. And I think that made more than design is important related to what you were saying, because it's craft. It's crafting with the hands, and that's the authenticity, I think, comes from that. And the object is very representative and kind of um, drives people, drives the visitors in the exhibition, because it's this, not really deconstruction, but more of a dissection of a staple of masculine wardrobe as the shirt. Yeah. Uh, but it's mounted on, on this kind of wire um, structure, and it's sculptural, but at the same time, it's very light. Um, and it's made of layers. So it's an object that you have to kind of encounter and examine in a way. So you see it and it seems flat when you arrive um, at the entrance of the exhibition. But then if you turn, and we actually displayed it in a way that it can be seen from the side, you can see the different layers. And for us, that was really important because it's something that, I mean, layering messages and the layers of clothes and fabrics, it's something that you kind of find within the exhibition. So. Um, and the fact that it was made in lockdown as well, in isolation, as a response, I think that Craig said something like, he wanted to find fantasy, but then all he could find was reality. Mm. And, and it was, I, I think it's really, when I read these and then I saw the object, I thought, oh, that's, that's the, just what you need to understand it. Amazing, and also how you're describing it, that it's when you come in and you, know, you see it just at the beginning, but it works so well as a 3D and then also a 2D yeah. image as well. So yeah, it's interesting. And yeah, it really struck me. The only poster that I remember is actually the one with Craig Green, so I know there are others. But not, that not is the one, the one in the tube. <laughs> he was also part of some other exhibitions. So I remember seeing him um, a few years ago at China through the Looking Glass at the Met, and then he was also part of the Catholic Imagination at the Met. I believe that Bath has collected him, uh, the Fashion Museum in Bath, he was part because he yeah, was probably nominated for yeah, a prize yeah. um, there. And uh, yeah, we have some images. So the first one here, yeah, that is China through the Looking Glass, this really spectacular display um, and it was it was spectacular it was also the first room that you moved into and it was and it was just dedicated to his designs um, and then the Catholic imagination um, that that was I think a year later or two years later according to the Met it was the most successful exhibition to date um, at that museum I find it really interesting. Um, to also think, and we're talking about a designer who, so who responds to desire, who experiments, who breaks sort of boundaries of what we consider to be the fashion paradigm. Would you say that that is the reason why he's been selected for so many exhibitions? Why he also within them takes such a center, sort of a central role? 
Marta, and I don't know who else would like to, but I know that you're, you're my curator today, so I'm coming to you, but it's not a question I'll just start, to but I'd love to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that the sculptural element of, of the garments that um, Craig makes and I keep using the word make because I really mm. think that it's something that has to do with hands and making things. Um, it makes for very successful um, exhibit objects. So when, when, when we see it on a catwalk, it's a dress, but then when it moves into the museum, it changes its identity and becomes an object, a museum object or a display object. And it's a very successful and kind of easy move, especially for the one that we selected and we have in, in Fashion and Masculinities. Um, and I think that this cultural element is really what um, kind of drives curator to, uh, to look at Craig's collection to find something that could respond to their concept or to what they wanted to say. It's, I think that curation, especially fashion curation, has to do with having some ideas and having a narrative and then trying to find, and this is curation and also research for exhibitions, um, to find something that can represent mm -hmm. and say in a different way that's not with words, what you wanted to convey. Pietro, does it change your opinion about a designer that you love passionately already when you see them in the museum and in an exhibition? Uh, no, not really, because I think it's, pieces are really sculptural, so they're yeah. actually really suited for museums. Yeah. I think, you know, um, they, and also because they're mixing, like, those sculptural elements that I, I fully agree, like, when you see them on the catwalk, it's like, a, a, a dress, but then when you put them in a, in a, in a museum, it becomes a sculpture. Yeah. And you fully appreciate the sculptural element and the details that are also in the movement of the, the garment as well, the way they move. Some of them are very rigid, some of them are really soft. And there's always this contrast we were talking about before, like we were, it's fragile and hard, like it's different, that this constant um, balance between the two, two contrasting elements, which you can fully understand when it's also in a museum and you see it from a different angle. Yeah. You've just said, and I, I'm always really interested in sort of thinking about that, is you, you said what it feels like to wear it. Yeah. And you said you, you wear Craig Green to Bergheim, yeah. right? Yeah. So... <laughs> 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 that's, that's also a different form of a display in a different kind of museum. It's an important space. But what does it feel like to dance well, in Craig Green? It, it feels amazing. You feel like, you mm -hmm. know, because like, I think it's... Um, Bergheim is a, co a place where you can wear a costume. Yeah. Loads of people will actually wear whatever, and it's very, it's very costumey. I don't go, I don't dare that much, but I think like for me, wearing a ni very nice Craig Green outfit, I was wearing shorts and a short sleeves shirt, so I wasn't too hot. That's, that's the back kind of uniform, you have to <laughs> the collection with, where we started introducing the holes. And I, so I, I had loads of fresh, fresh ways to just to freshen up while I was dancing, but it feels really good, because it, it's a very light material, you don't, you don't feel sweaty, and also it's um, um, kind of a loose fit, so yeah, actually it was amazing, and it's just, and I said the attention that you get is not the same attention that other people will get, like a full mesh suit, like, but it's a different attention, and you, you and I, I prefer that kind of attention. As Great, well. yeah. thank you. That's thank like, you. that's that. This is something I never knew, so that's amazing. So I've really <laughs> learned something. Thank you so much. Now, also, Craig Green has um, he has collaborated uh, outside of fashion, so he's not just shown in exhibitions, but he was also. Um, he um, collaborated with Ridley Scott on costumes for Alien um, Covenant, and he worked with the Royal National Opera, uh, with Wayne McGregor, um, Obsidian here at the Royal, at the Royal Opera House. Um, is, this, is this just, again, an obvious extension of his work, or... Do, is, there, is there sort of a difference between costume and fashion? What would we say? How would we make a distinction between both? And I'm not sure who I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> <Out there now. laughs> That's a good question. I, I think that obviously with costume, it, it's designed to be worn for like performance, so you don't need that kind of same functionality or you know, sort of like durability of it. But what I think really made this amazing is like Craig's like attention to like art and like taking your kind of conventional garments and 
sort of making them more into like sculptures and it, it, his entire sort of like collection, even like something as simple as like a shirt um, and the, the sculpture we were just discussing, it's like a, a performative piece. So I feel like the, the different layers to his um, like design work would really lend itself well to, to costume. Wonderful, and I think we're getting some images here. Did we, were we able to find the one from Alien? I think probably also his relationship um, mm. with uniforms uh, can start some references that then are making connection yeah. with a certain, certain work. And his references around military, uh, military uniforms. And personally, I think uh, the way that he's able to build narratives around uniforms and the way that he is identifying these references it feels um, very respectful of the uniform from a social and historical point of view. So they don't feel necessarily like costumes to me personally when I see them. Um, to me, they feel like they have very strong references. You can probably see some very signature details but I feel like what he's doing is again being very respectful of the character that is going to wear these um, with these clothing. He's able to take a step back and uh, to create these uniforms that we can recognize that they are great green. Mm. But at the same time, I feel like he is so immersed in references around military uniforms mm. that is something that happen quite naturally and looks quite natural. Very in interesting. Case. I totally agree with you and I, mm. I, um, I, that's, what we, that's what we know about film costume design, isn't yeah. it? As, as soon as you notice it, it as costume, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that is the way it's that. It's a very fine line, so a really good costume designer mm. will do something that is very subtle but still speaks to us and then tells us something about the character who wears yeah. the garments. But you should never notice it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is hard, that's hard to get right. And in that sense, I think it's very different to, let's say, um, a costume for, for the stage, opera. Yeah. You can yeah. go as mad as you like and it can totally overshadow because you cannot, you know, probably dominate an opera singer. They know how to present. Yeah. Um, but uh, do we have an image from the, the opera costume? That would be nice to see as well. So that was, um, it was called Obsidian Tear at the Royal Opera House, just to have a quick look. And I think it's really nice to think about that in comparison. I think as well within even these costumes for Alien, there are these kind of like signature, as you were saying, you can still tell that it's Craig. Like, so the twisting of, on the sleeve of the jersey piece we were just looking at a couple of images ago, like this is something that has also like appeared in his like previous collections along with this like elastic that goes up the, the top of the sleeve. So there's all of these kind of like subtle kind of signifiers to, to people who follow um, Craig's work and they can make this kind of connection that like it was him. So there's still within it being a, a costume, bit, yeah. <laughs> you have this kind of like subtle kind of like, oh, you know, like, it's it's instantly recognizable. It's like but but people in the know, but people mm -hmm. know and yeah. appreciate. Yeah, 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 exactly. It will happen to you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there's also like a sort of tailor tailor ship that is there. Like it's really tailored. It's not like it's not like a normal uniform that is normally done really quickly and it's not yeah. there's something that takes those uniform to the next level mm -hmm. of design and, and just construction. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Wonderful. Those images look amazing. Very, very beautiful. And yes, obviously, yes, so, so different. But uh, again, um, yeah, being in that sort of very different space. I thought, should we look at some images from the show? Yes. Should we do that? Because we haven't actually spoken <laughs> about the show, and I just realized, mm, you know, so because that's why we're here today, right? So here they are. Um, absolutely beautiful. Did any one of you watch it live yesterday? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, great. Um, so, you, you mentioned 
um, these important themes yeah, that come back mm -hmm. in Craig Green's collections. Each season, some people have commented on that they evolve, that they change, but there's a signature that carries through them. Um, you've also mentioned craftsmanship, mm -hmm. which I think is really important. I want us to look at that. But then also those references, these important references outside of fashion, so that are about uh, working with different materials, um, experimenting with silhouettes, engaging with this sort of idea of fashion as sculpture. Is this something that we're finding here again? Is it changing? Is there something that speaks to us that is new? There's so many elements we can look yeah. at, but I thought I'd kick off with that. Yeah, Personally, I think it's, it's all speculation, of course. Uh, but personally, I felt like, especially in this season, there was almost a sense of um, coming of age elements that were really strong. And we could see the uniform as almost like a rite of passage between childhood and adulthood. And even though there are some elements, as he always introduces them, uh, they're subtle, but they can be extremely like potently dark, such as the vase on the throat that almost looks like tracheostomy. Um, elements. But then I felt like this season felt especially light and hopeful, the, the pastel colors and uh, the, the reference of the quest and, and this almost, uh, th this community of young boys approaching adulthood and the uniforms that had references around office wear and uh, military uh, uniforms as well. And to me it was interesting because it almost looked like it's a fresh new uniform that is given to you. Maybe it's the first time you're wearing it. Some elements are still packaged like the, um, the um, uh, details that were still in the, in the dust bags. But it also gave a message that felt very tender in the sense of those elements of childhood, uh, like the, the huge padded blankets uh, and this uh, tense-like um, structure, almost as saying you can choose the elements of childhood that you want to bring with you in adulthood, and you're not going to be shamed for this, it's actually going to be celebrated. So those blankets are going to be colorful and, and decorated. Beautiful. So to me, it really felt like an approach of these very young boys uh, going towards adulthood, but in a very hopeful and, uh, and uh, bright, colorful way. Great, thank you. That's a, yeah, beautiful. I can see how you're, you're finding those narratives and the mm -hmm. connections um, yeah, between the tailoring, the reinterpretation of the suit, and then these references to boyhood. Absolutely. Any other impressions that we have or responses to the show? For me, like what, the word that I, I thought first that was frontier, like it's just reminding me a lot of a kind of a Western movie. In a way, but which which pieces do you think of Western? Uh, the 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 cub, like also the all the reference to the horse that mm -hmm. are at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then this cowboy team that is developed in a very uh, different way. So it's just this young cowboys boys of living on a farm. In a way, that's what I see. Like and and then there's again this contrast between very soft materials and something that is a bit more like the black ones mm -hmm. that are a bit more structured. Yeah, and as this structures that um, clothing and then there's really soft ones and the color the black is like really st st normally more structured the darker ones and it's, it goes w to the pastel um, colors and becomes softer and more um, mm, no i would say i use this but more boyish in a way more young like yeah uh, I think it's interesting as well because within this, it does feel like in the press release also mentioned that it's sort of like this sort of like transition into like a new um, summit that they're, they're wanting to climb. And I feel that like within here, there is um, sort of like a development on his previous uh, like first seasons where there is a lot of like workwear and military references and now it's starting to venture into like leathers and into the tailoring path a bit more. And I feel like this sort of like 
uh, evolution of the process and looking at this, there are so many pieces. You still have your military references, your workwear references, but within here, there is, there's so much representation of like every sort of area of masculinity in a sense. Like there's, there's like your more formal looks. So you've got like the jersey, the workwear, you know, and I think it's just like a really great overall representation of sort of like your, your archetypal masculine garments. Yeah, I was particularly drawn actually to the looks that are tight fitting and with the cutouts, which kind of surprised me a bit because it's it's not like the usual yeah. garments that you imagine. But in a way, then reading the press release, and I think I had to read it like four times to <laughs> to see where I was seeing this liminal space of adolescence and coming of age. And I think that this kind of tight fitting, but clothes but with holes with cutouts is like you're growing into your clothes you're kind of going out of them and then going back in again into a suit I love that so I think that that and especially the fact that the first one with the big cutouts it's the pink one the hot pink one which is not normally a color that we see in in Craig's collection is not kind of part of his usual palette mm -hmm. that very almost baby towards hot pink. Mm -hmm. I think that, and I think it's, it's a look before this, this one, it's the 30, 38? Yes, yeah, this right. one. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what is this stuff? Yeah. It, uh, is, are we going outside? It's, it's the muscles yeah. are growing mm -hmm. and it's, um, I, I think it's this evolution within the, the garments and not just within the collection as a whole. I think that looking at the singular garment really gives you um, layers and nuances to uh, what, for me at the beginning, reading the press release was quite okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to make sense of this. <laughs> yeah, we chatted about the press release yeah. before, and and uh, I can I can just read out, although it's tiny writing, I've got my glasses. So, committing to the in, invisible horizon, the baggage and decorations of many decades are individually re-examined and modified along their climb from the soft glow of adolescent reminiscences to the stark molds of adulthood. Mm. That's very poetic. And I love press notes. I always think that they're such an important part of the show. Um, but Marta, you made such a brilliant comment at the beginning when we talked about this. You said we were trying to understand it. And I also read it a few times. And uh, it speaks to me. There's so many things I can connect with and I recognize in the show. But what would you say is unusual about the notes? Um, just because I probably have, I have more experience with Italian press releases mm -hmm. related to collections presented yeah. in Milan, I think that one of the features of those press releases is as much as you can be evocative and, and use words to create a narrative, at some point you have to go to the clothes. Yeah. And to say what the fabrics are, what uh, the construction yeah, is. It's not in this, though. No, nothing this, this, about yeah, the Yeah, and I think this is a long feature, and I'm, I'm not sure um, if, it's, if I kind of understood it correctly, but I, I really think that this avoiding talking about the clothes almost draws us to look close, closely, even closer to the clothes, yeah. um, and not just stop at the presentation, which is, of course, stunning and so emotional, but still, I think that there's kind of cryptic, kind of sort of elliptic nature of press releases, I'd say here, but just referencing to this one, um, it's almost like kind of creates the opposite effect. So you go back to the clothes and see, okay, where, where can I find this word that I don't understand or that I can't really make sense of of um, at first sight, it's kind of yeah, it's it's a it's a process. Mm -hmm. It almost mm -hmm. engages you and asks you to ask questions, and that's why I um, I love press notes as well. Cecilia, your research is about writing in the expanded field. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw that out there, and I know that that's not not everybody will immediately know what that means. Mm -hmm. But um, what do you think about? the press note as a form, as a, as a, as a, almost a literary form, or just, is it just a? I would say in this case, I can see it as something that is extremely enigmatic, mm -hmm. but there is a vision for this. It's as if the press release is a tool for you to be introduced with the right mindset yeah. when you are attending a, a catwalk or you're looking at the work. And to me, is also very much close to probably the way that he relates to his own work as well. 
and uh, his identity of uh, probably initially considering himself someone that could belong more to fine arts. Mm -hmm. And so leaving his work that is open to interpretation and very much often when we are looking at artwork, modern artwork, there tends to be a, an open door in interpreting someone's work. So I think he's a bit, um, he's trying to set up a narrative that he knows that then is going to be authentic with his own work. And you can direct someone's uh, attention into, or, or mindset into a certain direction according to the way that you're going to express yourself. So I think he truly owns the power of storytelling um, in this case. And I feel like he's looking at what a press release is supposed to do, which is introduce you to someone's work rather than looking at how press releases are supposed to look like. And so I feel like you can see his own touch in every single detail of his work, including the press release. Yes. A little bit like an author who takes control over all the elements. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to also talk about um, materials, um, elements of craftsmanship, which you guys touched on, which I think is so important. Um, but then also the kinds of manufacturers uh, that Craig Green collaborates with. Um, so last season, I had a look. Um, Craig worked um, with a manufacturer who creates a medical factory a medical factory to, to make his bags, then um, a factory that usually makes equipment for, for deep sea divers, um, then Scottish, Scottish manufacturer which makes uh, gear sticks for tractors. Um, so I'm, I find that really fascinating and that's, I guess it's, it's unusual. Uh, Josh, do you, do you have a little bit of insight on sort of how Craig would approach, you have worked with him when you were on your placement? Yeah, and yeah. How does that happen? I think it is just a, a celebration of like the craft and the heritage. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's a lot of like with the the industrialization of like the fashion industry today. I feel like what is almost being lost in some senses is this like appreciation of like the care and time and craft that goes into like as you said like the the medical kind of factories, the gear sticks for tractors. Like these are all like specialist kind of like crafts that. You know, like w there's not so much of a, an appreciation for anymore. Whereas, like in the past, there was like such a focus and an importance for these kind of um, manufacturers. You know, and I feel like in terms of creating clothing and utilizing sort of these factories to to apply it to like a fashion sense, it's something that is also like exploring like um, traditional kind of techniques that wouldn't necessarily be applied in the clothing context. What I like about this, his kind of collaboration and his calling, because it's something that's quite common in fashion now to just yep. go out and look for something else. But I think that in this collection is, it's technical and technical collaborations, but they're not at all sanitized. There's a sensual element that's also the other kind of side that's uh, quite new to my eyes uh, when I look at Craig's work. These holes are very technical, very technical mm -hmm. details, but then they have a sensual charge. They have a relationship with the naked body underneath. Um, and I think that that also speaks to his ability to change the nature of the things that he brings into fashion as a kind of wide term. Yeah, I remember that in one of his previous collections, there was a cow out on, on the stern. And he said that he wanted to open that because it's the most vulnerable part of the body. But in this case, I felt like the cat outs, they're a bit as open gates towards the world and his relationship with vulnerability. And almost, it's almost ironic to see how you can be dressed up in a layered suit, but your nipple is still going to be yes. exposed, <laughs> as if you can control when and where you're going to be exposed um, to the world. And in this case, I think it was less uh, around, let's say, a sense of ex safety like he used mm -hmm. to be in the past. I can see those sensual references, which to me, they really fit in the comic, coming of age uh, period of time. Yeah. 
Well, that was also a really lovely comment. Um, I think I think you've. You, you've brought together so many elements, and I just sort of want to thank you, all of you, of sort of what you have brought. I felt that each of you sort of brought something to the topic, and I loved how you responded to Greg's work different, you know, in, in different ways. Um, and to me, what sort of resonates is I think that continuous interpretation of masculinity that sort of drives it through sort of, you know, this idea of boyhood and that journey. And I feel that I think what the press notes are telling us, what that move to Paris is telling us, what that sort of beautiful and sort of powerful um, collection is telling us is that there is an evolution taking place. And, uh, and that's, uh, it's dramatic, but it's also gentle and uh, has, has moved me. So I want to thank you, and we want to thank Greg, and maybe a little applause, yes. if you feel like it.